House. The question is that this House takes note of the petition. I call the member for Cochrane. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, it's an absolute privilege to speak on a petition today to save the iconic Manly Ferry from a permanent watery grave. Yeah. While I'm honoured to be the mover of this take note debate, the person who deserves the credit is the Deputy Mayor of Northern Beaches Council, Candy Bingham, who's a dynamo, Mr Speaker, and yeah. has saved the Manly Ferry Group. Mr Speaker, this is the definition of a community-run grassroots campaign to save iconic heritage that's being taken away from them, Mr Speaker, by the New South Wales Government. Shame. There's an old saying, Mr Speaker, Manly is 10 kilometres from Sydney and 1,000 kilometres from Care. And it seems the Transport Minister's taken this saying to heart because he couldn't care less about the people of Manly. Does it, does it, does it surprise you? To remove the Manly Ferry from Sydney Harbour would be like New York getting rid of their buildings mm -hmm. yeah. or Athens tearing down the Acropolis oh. or the Liberal Party getting rid of property developers. Oh. Mr Speaker, it just doesn't Order. seem right. Order. You'd have to ask yourself, you'd have to ask yourself why a central, iconic and permanent part of Sydney's iconic heritage would be lost. The history of the Manly Ferry is engraved in the history of Sydney. It's said that the Japanese mini submarines followed a Manly Ferry through the anti subnets at the mouth of Sydney Harbour on the night of May 29, 1942. Apparently, a late returning passenger thought he saw the sub in the water before dismissing the idea. Mr. Speaker, he was right. Lurking in the water was a submarine. And lurking at the bottom of this debate is the issue of privatisation. Yeah. Lurking there, Mr Speaker. It might be complicated, but what is happening is the services were privatised in 2013. The privatised lease was re-signed in 2019. The contract called for Transdev to purchase the new ferries on behalf of the government, which they chose to build in China. So a fantastic jobs plan for China undertaken by Andrew Constance. We need one right here in New South Wales. Now, if you think that's complicated, you'd be right. The idea of this messed up ideology means that the people of New South Wales are presented with a false choice. Either Chinese built ferries or no ferry at all. What a load of rubbish, Mr Speaker. We have a ferry building industry right here in New South Wales that Austrade attempts to sell to other countries. Imagine if the New South Wales government started investing in the ferry services that countries around the world buy from. We could really lift the capacity, produce jobs and do something good. But no, not under Andrew Constance's watch. So you'd ask yourself, what's driving this? If this is a government and a minister who isn't sort of, I don't know, grabbed by heritage and tradition, this is somebody, this is somebody who, would see, who would see the Collaroy turning the corner at Bradley's head, framed by the outline of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It would make most people think, God, I love Sydney. Unfortunately, it makes the transport minister think, who can I sell this to? <laughs> it's, a, it's a perverted ideology, Mr Speaker, and it comes down to what I think is a, a fundamental mistake with this economic policy. Uh, the, the Northern Beaches Council has discovered that there's $500 million worth of tourism dollars flowing into the Northern Beaches every single year. Catching the fresh water was the fourth top most cited activity for things to do behind going to the beach and eating. So pretty essential. There was 2.8 million visitors to Manly during 2019. That's up from 16% the year before. In 2020, 52% of visitors used the Manly Ferry to get to Manly. Visitor spending accounted for 12% of all of the jobs created on the northern beaches. So this is an economy that relies on tourism. Where does the tourism come from? The ferries. Who's getting rid of the ferries? The same member who's supposed to be representing these people. 12 per cent. 12 per cent. And I say to the loudmouth member opposite, I say to the loudmouth member opposite, the Minister for Transport said, the Minister for Transport said, look, we need to do this because at 4.5 metres, at 4.5 metres, freshwater ferries would normally cease operations if swells reach 4.5 metres. That's what he says. And he says, but don't worry about it because Although the new ferries will cease operating at 4.5 metres, the old ferries did too. So we checked the data. Wrong. We looked at the Manly Hydraulics Laboratory and found 
There were 15 occasions when the swell was above 4.5 metres, yet the ferry was only cancelled six times. This will result in more cancellations, a worse service for your community. I can't believe, as the local member, you'd endorse it. It's time to reverse the decision and save the iconic Manly Ferry, Mr Speaker. Don't be so reckless. That was good. That was good. That was all right. That was all right. That was all right. Before I call him. That was all right. Order. Order. Before I call the member for Manly, may I remember, uh, remind members that a number of people in the chamber are on three calls already, so I don't want to throw anyone out because we know it's a very good petition. I call a member for Manly. Thank you, Speaker. I want to I, uh, I thank the, uh, the member opposite for, uh, for his wonderful advertisement for Manly just then. Uh, speaker, I, uh, I would like to thank uh, constituents of Manly who have clicked on the button uh, supporting this, this petition. And uh, I'd like to also recognise the Northern Beaches Council and the Deputy Mayor for their wonderful advocacy of this very uh, important issue. Uh, for the past 24 years, uh, Mr Speaker, my commute from Manly has been by ferry. In fact, I caught it here this morning. Um, the, the swell was all right. Um, and let there be no mistake, the, the Freshwater Ferry is an icon of Sydney Harbour. Um, I saw it this morning going, going past as we went through the heads, and they have played and they will continue to play an incredibly important role um, on, on the harbour. Yes, uh, the patronage on the Manly to Circular Quay route has declined by around 15% between 2017 and 2019. And yes, the majority of days of the year they run well below capacity. I understand. Yeah, I just told you, I catch a ferry order, every day to order. So uh, I understand order. that during an average morning peak, the number of customers ranges from around 30 first thing in the morning at 6am to around 280 at its busiest time at 8am on a 1,000 person vessel. But those concerns, Speaker, are of course no reason to retire all of the beautiful old boats. Members will be aware that I've campaigned alongside others in my community to retain the fresh waters and whilst I have not secured all four, uh, two of them will continue to operate every weekend of the year and public holidays for many, many, many years to come, and so they should, Mr Speaker. But wouldn't it be great if the other two ferries could stay on the water, with the uh, MV Freshwater and MV Collaroy both continuing their operations? The government welcomes interest, and we're indeed seeking interest from organisations to continue operating the remaining two ferries for tourism yep, and it's heritage purposes. So I imagine uh, retaining the other two ferries would require a partnership between interested organisations. And there would seem to be a fantastic collaborative opportunity with the new uh, Museum of Sydney Harbour, which will be home to the Sydney Heritage Fleet, who are recognised internationally as a leading maritime heritage organisation. Mr Speaker, I understand that the Museum of Sydney Harbour will be a place for visitors to enjoy and understand the cultural importance of heritage vessels. It envisages a museum, berths for historic vessels and a ferry wharf. It will also include tours on heritage vessels. What a great opportunity, Mr Speaker. It would seem there is a possible partnership, uh, a possible opportunity for interested organisations to retain the freshwater ferries at this Museum of Sydney Harbour, and it would be a, a peer to fit for purpose. We are presented the opportunity to explore the electrification of ferries, which is an exciting and timely development which I wholeheartedly support. And Mr Speaker, the Northern Beaches Council has vigorously campaigned and set out how easy it would be to retain a freshwater ferry. And I'm advised that the decision by Transport for New South Wales to retain two of the ferries is final. And so I'm calling on Transport for New South Wales to provide as much support as possible to the Northern Beaches Council for them to undertake a feasibility study or business case for the council to retain and operate one or two of the remaining freshwater class ferries. In October, the council passed a motion to save all large manly ferries, and the deputy mayor of the council and the chair of the Save the Ferries group has made many good points, including that the fresh waters have been rigorously maintained up until now, are fit for service and have decades of life left, and the cost of maintenance programs to the fresh waters should be seen as an investment. So in line with their campaigning to save all ferries, I've written to the council encouraging them to undertake a business case or feasibility study. This would be real and meaningful action on their behalf. And I also reiterate my call to Transport for New South Wales to assist the Council where possible. The Speaker, the freshwater class ferries are an icon of Sydney Harbour. That's right. The compromise of retaining two of them will of course not please everybody. But year round, 
for years to come, they will remain on Sydney Harbour. I, the question is that, that the House takes note of the petition. Can I just remind people also to be COVID safe and spread out and sit on a... On a Still in the, still in the, still in the <laughs> parliament. So uh, when we can dance. <laughs> yeah, we can One point five minutes. The question. <laughs> that the house takes note of the petition. I call the member for Swansea. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, I too would like to uh, thank the Manly community and uh, as the member for Cogra has said, the work that the Deputy Mayor of the Northern Beaches Council, Candy, has put in to ensuring that uh, these signatures were collated and distributed into the parliament. It's not easy, as we all know, to, to get a lot of signatures for petitions and we know uh, the commitment that's required to do that. So the more than 20,000 signatures to this petition know and feel and understand in our bones in the Labor Party, we support the Manly Ferries. We know that our Harbour Ferries must be safe, they must be reliable and they must be iconic. The Manly Ferry run in, is a major tourism drawcard and an essential public service. And it's important that we remember that this is a public transport service. It is also a definitive aspect of our harbour's culture and its history. In fact, the double-ended harbour ferries have been part of the Sydney Ferry Network since 1879, when the Wallaby was first introduced by the Northern Shore Ferry Company. Over the past 140 years, uh, we have had a series of similar vessels, many of which have, ex have entered the lexicon to describe and typify Sydney Harbour. Of course, we had the South Stain, the Lady Class Ferries, and finally, the lovely Freshwater Class. The state government refused to consider retaining the Lady Northcott and the Lady Heron, and even though they were loved by the tourists and locals alike, the, these two grand old dames were towed in the darkness of night to the Newcastle Harbour and put up for sale. Once again, we see that the Berejiklian government knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. We must not allow the government to do the same thing with the lovely fresh waters. They are the last remaining link with Sydney's rich and storied maritime past, but that does not make them obsolete. These four ships provide many thousands of miles of reliable, safe and efficient services every week for many thousands of commuters, tourists and local day trippers alike. We can take no comfort in Andrew Constance's proposal to a staged scrapping of the freshwater class ferries. The suggestion that one or two boats would be kept for summer holiday trips is just fanciful. In practice, these boats will be scrapped by the Liberal government the moment any costly maintenance or repair work is required without the economy of scale provided by maintaining the fleet of four. The Labor opposition has been campaigning hard on the importance of local jobs. We want to see local manufacturing workers supported to build the world's best trains, trams and ferries for New South Wales public transport passengers. But we also respect the work and expertise of the past. The freshwater class ferries were built in Newcastle and their longevity and reliability is a testament to the skills and the quality of our local shipbuilders. So when the freshwater class vessels do reach their end of life, they should be replaced by a high quality, fit for purpose vessel, which is built by a local shipyards using local workers and expertise and their amazing skills. We have seen what happens when a replacement fleet is built offshore for the cheapest possible price. I note the interjection by the member um, over here, and Fort Jackson is closed because you have actually put every contract overseas. So unfortunately, Fort Jackson is closed in New... Unfortunately, ferries are no longer built in Newcastle, mate. I know you went down there to the state dockyard when you were there. We have seen what has happened with the replacement fleet when it's built offshore. We get the cheapest possible price and we get a, a, a floating bunch of junk. The river class vessels shipped in from overseas with rippled, were riddled with asbestos and have hundreds of manufacturing and engineering faults that are still not resolved seven months later. Nobody benefits from the Berejiklian government's hatred of our maritime heritage and our manufacturing sector except 
offshore shipyards and offshore workers. And we will need to steady the supply because there is no way that we will get 40 to 50 years of reliable service out of this cheap junk that Andrew Constance has lumbered this state with. However, the real madness of the Transport Minister's decision is a practical one. The replacements of ferries will only seat a third of the passengers and can't handle the big swells between Sydney Heads and Freshwater. They would not have handled the swells last weekend or last week. We know that for sure. But the, the current freshwaters did not miss a beat. These icons, and con these icons and traditions must be preserved and built upon. They should not be torn apart as some kind of bureaucratic sport just to run the cheapest possible service. The question is that the House takes note of the petition. I call the member for Karingai. Mr Speaker, no one can deny the iconic nature of the Freshwater Ferry. Before the member for Cogra was even born, the great Melbourne band Australian Crawl embodied the romantic quality of the Manly Ferry at the beginning of its hit song, Reckless, with the following words, meet me down by the jetty landing where the pontoons bump and spray, the others reading standing as the Manly Ferry cuts its way to Circular Quay. Now, as a Newcastle boy, my first days in Sydney, I missed the salt water in my nostrils. And of course, I followed the advice of Australian Crawl, went to Circular Quay, got on the Manly Ferry for the first time, and how beautiful it was. No one with a heart in their chest can deny that the Manly Ferry has a special place in our city. And I commend the way in which the member for Manly, James Griffin, has courageously fought to retain the Manly Ferry by a blended approach of retaining the fresh water on the weekends and introducing the Emerald class during the week. Now, I think we can all admire an MP that stands up for his community, unlike the member for Cogra, who suffered a massive swing by his community at the last election. Now, the Emerald class ships on Monday through to Friday will provide 328 faster services on the Manly route each week, an increase of about 67 per cent. These more frequent services will hopefully encourage more people to use public transport, and the ferry service, which is incredibly important not only for the character of our city, but to our natural environment, which I know the people on the northern beaches feel very strongly about. Every extra person on the ferry represents one less person on our roads. On top of that, the Emerald class vessels are more fuel efficient and their engines are more environmentally friendly in comparison to the existing freshwater class vehicles. There's no better way to get to work than on the ferry. It's much better for your spirits and frame of mind at the beginning and the end of the day uh, to avoid traffic jams and glide by the Sydney Opera House, the most beautiful building in the world, perched at a prominent location on the most beautiful harbour in the world. The new Emerald Class Ferry will provide commuters with a more frequent and fast service, and commuters will be able to use their weekly Opal card cap on their fees. Now, freshwater patronage year on year since 2017 has unfortunately been declining, which demonstrates a serious issue of commuter choice. Patrons have argued loudly for improved commuter services. Between 2017 and 2019, patronage on the freshwater Manly to Circular Quay route has unfortunately declined by 15 per cent, from 5.2 million in 2017 to 4.5 million in 2018 and even less in 2019. On average, weekend patronage on the freshwater Manly to Circular Quay route has declined by 12 per cent between 2017 and 2019. Now, look, contrary to common misconceptions, the Emeralds can handle conditions around Sydney Heads. These vessels have been purpose built to operate the Manly to Circular Quay route. There are currently six Emeralds in the fleet, and these often travel to Manly today when a freshwater is unavailable. There are also some conditions, such as when is, there are high frequency waves near a dock when the emeralds will not be able to operate while the sorry, where the emeralds can operate when the larger freshwaters cannot. During the busy summer period, in addition to the freshwater on weekends, the new emerald class vessels will operate every 10 minutes on every day and move up to 2,400 customers per direction per hour. 
Furthermore, on our busiest days in summer, an additional Emerald class will operate and services will be delivered every 8.5 minutes, providing seven trips an hour, moving 2,800 customers per hour per direction. Modern public transport has to be relevant and attract customers. With the Emerald class, you can sit outside, it's got Wi-Fi, it's got bike racks, it's disability and pram friendly. The freshwater class vessels have 200 external seats for customers. The new Emerald class vehicles will have 140 seats for customers outside. So with more frequent services, this means more external seats for customers to enjoy on weekends, public holidays and summer running. On weekends, the total number of outdoor seats will increase from 400 to 700 on average. So I'm going to finish where I started with Australian call. Crawl. Throw down your guns. Don't be so reckless. Throw down your guns. Don't be so. Chamber that there's 20,000 people online watching us right now. That's why he's the speaker. In theory. You rounded that up a lot. The question is order, Member Pakayama. I don't want to have to throw the chair out, but I will. The question is that the House takes note of the petition. That was one on one, but I'll call the member for Charlestown. Thank you, Mr. Temporary Speaker. And for, firstly, let me say uh, we don't like that kind of behaviour. Um, <laughs> a ride on the freshwater ferry from Circular Quay to Manly is a rite of passage. While some may see the ferry as just another mode of transport, just another way to get from point A to point B, and obviously including the member for Karingai. This is not the case for several million international tourists who visit this city during normal times, nor is it the case for the many regional visitors from right across the state and indeed the entire country who bring their children to what is inarguably this country's finest capital city to experience it all and all it has to offer. For those visitors, a ride on the Manly Ferry is considered an essential Sydney experience. A ride on the freshwater class ferry is not just about the destination that it takes you to, it's about how you travel. It's about seeing this city from the deck of the ferry with the wind in your hair and the salt water in, on your skin. Riding on a big ferry is an experience that ranks alongside other must-do things to do in Sydney, such as visiting the Opera House and viewing the Harbour Bridge, visiting Bondi Beach and the Taronga Zoo. And Taronga Zoo. It's one of Sydney's quintessential experiences. It's a journey which has been immortalised in songs, in books, in films, and indeed in our collective memory since 1850, when the first big ferries took to Sydney Harbour. It's a voyage that contributes to the North Northern Beaches' $500 million a year tourism industry by delivering many of the several million people who visit Manly each year. The removal and reduction of the freshwater class ferry from Sydney Harbour will surely land a major blow to the businesses and the people of Manly, and it's a travesty that this government is leading that. The government wants to replace all but two of the freshwater class ferries with smaller, foreign-made emerald class ferries. The remaining freshwater ferries will run at weekends and on public holidays, and this is yet another of this government's short-sighted cost-cutting measures, again at the expense of the people of Manly and the local businesses. However, I, like the 22,000 people who signed today's petition, hold serious concerns about this government's plans for the Manly ferry service. Replacing the freshwater class diesel engine ferry with another diesel-fuelled vessel, a vessel which, unlike the freshwater class ferry, has no capacity to be retrofitted with an electric engine, it's beyond short-sighted. It reeks of the kind of planning this government is renowned for, and that is ad hoc, ad lib 
absurd, impromptu and myopic. Most shocking of all, Mr Speaker, is that there are real concerns about the Emerald Ferry's capacity to handle the large ocean swells that regularly roll through Sydney Harbour heads. And we know that when the smaller ferries get cut, they get replaced with buses. We know that the large fer the freshwater class ferries can handle much bigger seas than the smaller ones. The Emerald class ferries, are, when, when they first arrived in Australia, they were identified with more than 80 defects or safety concerns by inspectors. These defects included faulty windows, poor plumbing in the engine rooms, and unbelievably, Unbelievably, as the member for Swansea has rightly raised in this place, that the hulls were too thin to hold a rigid form. These are problems that would not have occurred had these vessels been manufactured here in New, S New South Wales or indeed in Newcastle, where they used to be built. These are problems that would not have occurred if the government did not undertake this exercise in lunacy. The freshwater ferries, which have been well maintained, still potentially have decades of service ahead of them, and they must be retained. The petitioners are calling for a scheduled maintenance program, at, which must be put in place for all four ferries and for a new replacement pro plan that includes double-ended vessels with a capacity for 1,000 passengers on the Manly route, and that must be developed. I want to thank and congratulate the Deputy Mayor of Northern Beaches Council, Candy, Councillor Candy Bingham. Um, I want to recognise the Manly Ferries Group and the work that they've um, put together in getting more than 22,000 signatures. I want to recognise their protest they heard, held earlier today in Martin Place. And I also want to recognise that they got there by ferry, by the Manly Freshwater Class Ferry. I call on this government to listen to the people, to the more than 22,000 people who have signed this petition, the 22,000 people who represent only a fraction of those who oppose this plan. The government must go back to the drawing board and work with all stakeholders to develop a common sense approach that will see all four, four freshwater class ferries retained. I thank the member for Charlestown. The question is that the House oh. take note of the petition. I call the minister in response. Tell me like this. Look, I've just got something to say to those 220 odd people watching this online. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and I think you will see the importance of this debate. And uh, I also want to uh, thank the member for Manly in particular who uh, saved the freshwater because the initial decision was to take them all away. Uh, and one of the reasons for that um, was obviously in terms of the re reliability and requirements for commuter services. And as the uh, community has come forward, uh, obviously the need to maintain them for also tourist purposes, particularly on weekends and public holidays is what we've done. And we obviously in saving those two, um, it'll very much be that focus in terms of uh, uh, tourism that, that they're being retained. Because if you actually go and have a look at the transport data in relation to the ferry services, I mean, we did actually want to increase services in terms of ferries, um, which is why uh, we are now delivering an increase of 256 services to the commuters of the Northern Beaches. Um, and we're also seeing, of course, um, a big shift uh, away from ferries to the B line as well, which happened between 2017 and 2019. So you've got a drop in patronage. You don't have full capacity in terms of the use of the freshwaters during particularly the, the busy peak periods because a lot of those commuters are wanting to get on a fast service into town. They also want to get on a fast service back home. Um, now, the other point which I think is also important to address just does relate to the issue around the heads. Uh, there is, and the advice that I've always had in relation to the manoeuvrability of the Emerald class is it's a, a lot better in terms of handling the swell, particularly in and around Manly Wharf. So again, one of the factors in that thinking was part of that. And I know uh, certainly, and I have heard stuff um, in relation to the international side of things. And we all want, want Australian manufacturing to be successful. In fact, as Minister, I was able to directly procure Emerald Class ferries from Tasmania in the first instance. Yeah, yeah. And, and secondly, um, Transdev, who obviously engaged by government in terms of running the franchise, uh, procured through Burden uh, the ferries. And I, I want to again reiterate, uh, Burden based at Port Macquarie does do a lot of the build. About 70% of the build in terms so of the design. Out here. No, no, just please. You know that. I'll bring the photos down and show them to you. Well, I've actually been and seen them. And yeah, I'd, I have too. Yasmin, I'd like you to go and talk to them because. I have. I've met them. Well, I know. I know. Who are you speaking to? Anyone? Uh, the chamber. 
Anyone can put, go put, and run put everything through the type of campaign that you guys do. Uh, the burden would have well and truly explained to you the contribution that Australian workers... And they were not there to hear. Sorry, you're like just... So you, the other day you are on the front page of the Herald saying that they were designed overseas. I read that, it's in the Herald. No, that's not what it said at all. Well, you sorry, but you, right? you have no. been Member for Swansea, the ferries remove retained. yourself from the chamber. Um, I do note that those opposite believe Seriously? in net zero Seriously. emissions. I'd be interested to know how they believe that. We are going to see the electrification of ferries into the future and that'll be exciting. But in relation to this vessel, if you put a battery on it, it'd be that big that the boat would sink. Thanks. Mrs. I thank the Minister. The question is the House takes note of the petition. I call the member for Cogra. Thanks, Mr Speaker. I want to thank Candy Bingham, Charlotte Rimmer, Paul Garrett from the MUA, the Good for Manly Community Group, Northern Beaches Council and the Manly Community Forum and Save the Manly Ferry Facebook Group and the Action for Public Transport for their enormous active fight on behalf of the Manly Ferry. Look, it was an interesting debate. I think you'd agree, Mr Speaker. We saw the member for Manly heroically order a review into the Manly Ferry, so um, we can all look forward to that. And interestingly, interestingly, Mr Speaker, the, the member for Karingai praised him for his courage for ordering a review. So look, Dunkirk and Gallipoli were certainly heroic retreats, uh, Mr Speaker, but um, I mean, this is ridiculous. He'd, he'd, stick, he'd, stick, a medal, he'd stick a medal on Darrell Maguire for services to investigations. Order. You know what? You know what? Unless you're on a script, you are so hopeless. You are so overrated. Anyway, I, I digress, Mr. Speaker. I will say this: Andrew Constance. The big problem with this is Andrew Constance is the transport minister. Now, might be a good member for Burger, not very good transport minister. A few months ago, he announced a compromise position, and it was trumpeted in the Sydney Morning Herald on November 27 with the headline "Compromise P uh, Position," and the quote reads. Minister saves one manly ferry, offers to sink another. <laughs> so his plan, this is fair income, Mr Speaker. Mr Constance was quoted as saying, quote, he was hopeful tourist operators or heritage organisations would be interested in the retired freshwaters while he was open to considering sinking one of them. Yeah. Sinking one of them. I mean, the community in Manly want these as public transport alternatives. The Minister for Transport actually, in a major metropolitan newspaper, says, my compromise position is to sink one, presumably off Sydney Heads as a dive site. This is not a commitment to public transport, Mr Speaker. This is, at the end of the day, a disgrace. The member for Manly is in a position to influence his own government to save public transport for his own community. It's time to save the Manly Ferry. I thank the member for Cogra. The question is that the House takes note of the petition. All that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The debate on the 20,000 signature electronic petition, Manly Ferries, having concluded, I thank the members of the public for listening to the debate online.